Fine tuning is one of the most powerful ways you can utilize ChatGPT. You're basically making ChatGPT an expert on whatever data you feed it. I wanna do a step-by-step -step example at how you can fine tune your own data and create an expert ChatGPT bot on whatever topic you want. By the end of the video, I think you'll find this new skill to be pretty inspiring in all the ways that you can use it. I'll even show you how to share your expert bot with your friends and family if you want. So briefly, how is fine tuning any different than just prompting ChatGPT? Well, for one, if you're using the API, it can actually be a lot cheaper because you won't need to supply a ton of context or examples to get the answer that you want. It also makes ChatGPT an expert on whatever topic or data you want it to be. This can be especially powerful if you have data that's not included in ChatGPT's training data. You can collect specialized data relative to Reddit or tweets or things in your personal life. This is a really powerful tool and has a lot of potential. So let's get into the example. First, we're gonna need some data. For this, I'm using Kaggle.com, which if you're not familiar, is a website that has a bunch of data sets that you're able to download for free. I'm using the Twitter US Airlines sentiment data. When you download their file, it'll have a bunch of columns that you don't need, and you can just delete those, but keep the ones that are the actual tweets and sentiment. So what this file has, is a bunch of tweets to airlines from people, and then someone has labeled them as positive, neutral, or negative. Our bot is gonna fine tune train on all of this data, and then when we input our own tweet, it will tell us if our tweet is positive, negative, or neutral based on all of this data. What's important here is formatting. So you wanna make sure that you only have two columns of data. One is the prompt column, and the second is completion. Uh, you also wanna make sure that the headers are labeled prompt and completion. The other major piece with the Excel data itself is saving it as a CSV. So when you go to File, Save As, you'll see it's a CSV file, but you need to make sure that it's the UTF-8. That's really important. So save as UTF-8. Um, I'm, I'm gonna call this lowercase tweets. Great. So for actually fine tuning our program, I'm gonna use Google Colab again. If you're not familiar with it, I have another video about creating a chat bot that uses this, but it's pretty easy to use. So we'll go to file, new notebook, and basically in fine tuning, there's three phases of data that's generated here. The first phase is the raw data that we have that we just kind of went through, which is tweets and then classification of positive, neutral, or negative. The next phase is clean up that data so that OpenAI is able to actually read it to then fine tune it. In order to clean up our data, we're going to use a program called Pandas. So the first line we're going to do here is install the three programs that we're going to use in our fine tuning program today. So we're going to do the pip install command for OpenAI, Pandas, and Gradio. So obviously we're going to use OpenAI because that's who's going to one, clean up the data and two, fine tune it for us. Pandas is going to clean up our raw data that we just looked at. And then Gradio is going to be the user interface where we can interact with our fine-tuned model that we create with this program. So run that. And once that finishes, then we're going to import the programs on a new line. So we'll do import OpenAI, import Pandas as PD, import Gradio as GR. And these are just variables that we'll use in the program. The next thing we're going to need is our OpenAI key. So we'll do a new line here, and then we'll do OpenAI.API underscore key and then your API key. If you're not sure where to find this, I have a video on where to locate your OpenAI API key. Check it out. Run that. And that'll link us then to our OpenAI account now. And then we'll do a fourth line. Now we need to load our Excel file that we just saved into our Google Colab session here. To do that, you can click the folder button here and you'll see it has some folders here. You can drag and drop the file into this space here and actually access it for what we're gonna do today. I don't recommend doing that because when the collab session ends, it will delete that file and uh, it will be useless then. So in order to save the file so that you can access it later after you close your window, you need to mount your Google Drive. And so you can click this button here and it'll say, do you want to permit this notebook to access your Google Drive files? And say, connect to Google Drive. Once that's done mounting, you'll see your Google Drive folder has popped up now. And so then you can go into your drive and create a new folder for our fine tuning example today. For this one, I'm gonna do airline tweets. So there we go. Now that I have an airline tweets folder, I'm going to drag the tweets CSV file that we saved earlier into that Google Drive space here. So just make sure they're saved elsewhere. Uh, this is on our Google Drive, so it won't get deleted. And there it is. So now we need to pull our CSV file into our program here. And then we want Pandas, which is a program that will clean up the file for us so that OpenAI's program can actually read it. So on this new line here, we're gonna actually define where our file is located. So we're gonna do file path equals, and then a single 
quote, and then backslash contents, backslash drive, backslash my drive, backslash airlines hyphen tweets, and then put the actual file itself. So tweets.csv, and then make sure you close the quotation marks at the end of that. So this is defining the file path for our Excel data that we're gonna use here. Next, we're gonna actually define a data frame that pandas will use to define our Excel sheet here. To do that, we're gonna do df equals pd dot read csv so this is pd is pandas is going to read the csv file that we have a file path for now and since we've defined where it's at we can actually just put file path and run it so we can see more of our window i'm going to close this so we just ran pandas against our raw excel data what pandas program does is cleans up all the white space and weird characters and formatting that OpenAI's program won't recognize so now that pandas has created a new file for us and cleaned up our data we need to actually download that data so we're going to do a new line and do df.2 underscore csv in a single quotation our file path so contents drive my drive airline tweets backslash and then tweets i'm going to do underscore pandas because it's going to actually write the cleaned up data now to our location here and then index equals false we do not want this to index the data so indexing is adding a first column and putting one two three four all the way down open ai does not like that so we want that to be false and then run it. And when you run that, you'll see it actually adds a new CSV file into our folder. And so now Pandas has cleaned up our raw data and removed all the white space so that OpenAI can actually read it. So this is the second phase of cleaning up our data. The third phase uses OpenAI CLI, which is command line instruction. In order to fine tune data, the data needs to be formatted very specifically. And rather than go through and manually update thousands of lines of data, OpenAI has a program that'll clean it up and get it exactly how their program needs needs to see it so that it can fine tune that. In order to load that program, we're gonna do a new line and do exclamation point, open AI space tools, space fine tunes dot prepare underscore data, and then do a space minus F. And so this is actually going to read our pandas file from our session folder, and it will analyze all of that data and ask you questions about the data so that it can format it correctly. So run it and it says analyzing based on the file. Uh, we have a thousand seven examples in our training data. And then down here it says based on analysis, we will perform the following actions. So these are necessary in order for OpenAI's program to actually read our data. So it is making these changes, going to convert our CSV to a JSON L, which is good. It's going to remove additional column keys. Uh, we have a bunch of unnamed columns from where I deleted data. Um, it's going to clean it up. So there's only two columns prompt completion. And then it has recommended. So this is where it's actually asking us questions. So it says it found two duplicate rows. So I want it to remove that. I'm going to put Y for yes and then hit enter. And then it says add a suffix separator or a new line to all prompts. If it's recommending it, yes, enter. And then add white space character to the beginning of the completion. Again, OpenAI is recommending it, yes. Would you like to split the training and validation set? For this video, I'm gonna do no, just so it's a little faster. And then your data will be written to a new JSON file, proceed. So this is actually gonna create now our third cleaned up data file that we will run the fine tuning program against. And it will add it then into our folder where it pulled the pandas file. So I'm gonna say yes. And then it's gonna run that and it says, your modified file has been saved and it's named tweets underscore pandas underscore prepared. So this is our third file now that has been cleaned up with pandas and then cleaned up so that OpenAI's fine tuning program can actually read it. And you'll see it shows up here inside of our Google Drive folder location. It says here for our data set, it should take about 26 minutes to train on Curry, which is one of the more advanced models. It goes Ada, Bobbage, Curry, and DaVinci is uh, GPT-3 actually. Based on which one of these you use, the Ada is the cheapest and fastest and then they just get longer, more advanced, and more expensive depending on which model you use. So for this example, we're going to use Ada. It's going to be a lot faster and a lot cheaper for us. Uh, but keep in mind, depending on how much data you have is how much cost you will incur through your through your API. So now that we have a file that OpenAI has cleaned up for us and is able to be read by their fine tune program, we need to actually fine tune our data. So to tell OpenAI that we're gonna fine tune, we need to define, create training file, and we're gonna do the file path that we defined earlier. So it's gonna take it to our Google Drive folder here. And so we'll do define, create underscore training underscore file, and then in parentheses, file underscore path. And then there's a colon here, and we'll do file equals openai.file.create. 
state. So it's going to create a new fine tuning file for us. File equals open and then parentheses file path comma in double quotations RB, which is read only binary. And then underneath that, you'll put purpose and you're telling OpenAI you're going to fine tune this data. And then at the end, we wanted to return the file that we're going to fine tune. And then training file equals create training file. And then we're going to define the location where OpenAI just saved our prepared file. So content backslash drive backslash my drive backslash airline tweets backslash tweets underscore pandas underscore prepared dot json l and then make sure that's in double quotations so it should look just like this and then we're going to have it print the training file when you run this it's going to load our file into the code and then into open ai's servers actually so so once we run this it's going to spit out this information about our file and we see that open ai has given our prepared data an id variable and that's what now represents our data that we want to fine tune so we're going to do training file and then ID, which references this up here and run that. Good. So now we have our file loaded into our program, ready to be fine tuned. So to actually fine tune the data that we have here, we're going to do a new line and do fine underscore tuned underscore model and then equals openai.finetune.create and then in parentheses training underscore file equals training underscore file of our training data a model. And then this is where you're going to define which of OpenAI's models you want it to train with. So again, you can do Ada, Bobbage, Curry, or DaVinci. For this example, I'm going to use Ada, but you can put in which of the four you want. After that, there's epochs. Uh, epoch is how many times you want the training data to go through the data one by one and fine tune it. If you pick a number too low, you don't do enough passes, you won't have a good fit to the data. It just won't be trained enough. But if you do too many passes, it will actually overfit the data. So the default is four, and I would just suggest leaving it at that. But that's basically it. So we've defined the model, we've defined the epochs at four, and then print fine tune model. It'll actually output then a variable that represents our model. When I hit this, it's going to load pretty quickly, but it's actually fine tuning in the background at OpenAI on their servers. Created, fine tuned. So this is actually the name now of our model that's in a queue. OpenAI created an ID that represents the file that is being fine tuned. So this is what you need to reference in order to see how far along your data is. So I'm going to do a new line here. And to check on the status of our training, we can do openai.finetune.list underscore events. And then in parentheses, ID equals, and OpenAI has actually named our file that's being fine tuned on their server. So it's this right here. You're going to plug that in to the ID that you're looking to get the events for. And then you just need to do the bracket, single quote, and then data. And then we will run that to get a status of how our fine tuning is going. And you can see here, it'll give us a status. So in the message field, it says uh, created the fine tune. Fine tune is in queue. So we were actually in queue. Uh, you'll also see the cost for running the fine tuning on your data. So uh, my cost here is uh, five cents to my API billing account. These are some big budget YouTube videos, guys. So give me a like and uh, subscribe to help me pay these bills, huh? I very much appreciate that. So we can see the fine tuning has started. If we just run this again, it'll give us a new update. So here we can see it's run the first epoch, one of four. We can kind of just keep clicking this run button until we see that it's been through epoch one, two, three, four, and then eventually it'll say fine tune succeeded. So I'm gonna let this run and I'll pick up once it's done. 20 minutes later. All right, so after hitting the run button multiple times, 20 minutes later, it has fine-tuned our data. Congratulations, you now have a fine-tuned data set uh, on OpenAI. The other thing to note here, this is running the fine-tuning on OpenAI servers. So if you wanna shut down your computer and leave, just make sure you save your collab session here. You can come back to it. Some of the more advanced models like DaVinci will take hours to run. So this one took 20 minutes. I've run some more advanced models and they will take five to six hours to run depending on the size of your data and which model you're using. But if you do leave and you want to come back, you don't need to run the whole thing again. Otherwise, you'll re-fine tune and clean up your data and everything, and then you'll get another set of data fine tuning. So if you do shut down and come back, all you'll need to do is run the pip install for OpenAI and Gradio, actually, and then import it, and then link your OpenAI key. And then from there, you can just go down to the bottom and click the status line, and it'll give you an update on whether it's like where it's at in the process, basically. There are queues as well. So if there's a bunch of people fine tuning data all at once, I've been like 22 in line and it will update your spot in line each time so you can track it and then it will actually start fine tuning. So either way, our example here is done. So, so now we have a model that they have defined and it says uploaded model out of this string right here. So this is actually how we will call and define our fine tune model now. So now that we have our fine tune model, let's test it out. We'll do a manual prompt first and then I'll show you how to integrate it into Gradio so it's a little more user friendly. To manually test it here, we'll do a prompt underscore text equals and then quote 
quotes. This will be the fake tweet that we ask it to, to classify based on all the fine tuning it just did. So my fake tweet will be my plane smelled and my flight was late. All right. And then OpenAI requires you to do this backslash n hash to let uh, to let the program know that there's a new line and then the hash to separate the prompt from the response. So just put that in there. And then after that, we'll do response equals OpenAI dot completion dot create and then open parenthesis. And then underneath it, we'll do model equals and then do quotations here. And this is where we're going to plug in our new fine-tuned model that OpenAI has defined up here for us. Copy this model name, paste it in. And after that, then we'll do prompt equals prompt underscore text comma. I'm going to set the tokens. So Mac tokens equals five. This is just how many tokens it will use and charge on the API billing to run our fine-tuned model. And we should only need five tokens because it should only output positive, negative, or neutral, which is about five. So then we can also set the temperature and we'll set that to zero. And then we just need it to print the response. So print response. We'll have it give us the first choice to zero. And then we'll do text. All right. So now we're going to test our fake tweet against all of our fine tuned data and have it tell us based on all of that training, whether it thinks our tweet here is positive, negative, or neutral. Oh, it's choices. Negative, negative, negative. All right, that is correct. So our fine-tuned model works. Let's try it again. My plane had the best movies. Positive. All right, it's working. Cool. So now we can take the model that we fine-tuned and load it into Gradio. For this, we're going to do a new line. I'm just going to paste in from a previous one that I did. This is our Gradio interface that we'll load, where basically you can give it hidden context. It doesn't need this, but you can give essentially context to further help it find the correct answer based on the fine-tuning data. I'm going to leave the hidden context blank. User prompt is what's going to be in the input. It will return the text strip. Then for Gradio's interface, we've got our inputs, enter a tweet, title, call it Twitter light happiness. A description based on thousands of tweets determines if the tweet is positive, negative, or neutral. Cool. So this is ready to run. Again, by setting this share to true, it will give you a link that you can share with other people. And it says it's free for 72 hours. All right, let's test it. The stewardess punched me. Submit. Negative. It's working. Pilot was my dad. Neutral. Yeah, all right, fair. Anyway, that's how you fine tune your Excel sheet data into a fine tuned model within OpenAI. You can obviously make this more accurate by including more examples. The more examples, the better. Again, OpenAI recommends at least a few hundred for fine tuning to make it worthwhile. But anyway, this video is actually a suggestion from one of you in the comments. So please keep them coming and make sure you subscribe so you know when the new videos are coming out. I'm trying to do basically a college class on AI tools and it'll be totally free for you. So that's kind of cool. I hope this worked for you and see you next time.